with the pen tool is a tricky one. It's, it's something that's very not natural. It's not something that, like the pencil, if you use the pencil tool in Illustrator, you can draw with it quite easily. Let me just set this to a little bit more visible color like red. So when you draw with the pencil, that's quite natural, especially if you use a tablet like what I'm doing now. With this, you can draw almost like a, a pen, pencil on a paper. And more importantly, if you double click on the pencil, you can set it up with these options that I have here. So you keep selected the path that you are drawing and you also have the edit selected uh, selected paths turn on why that's useful is because if i start drawing something let me just show you this again so drawing with the pencil i can continue drawing that line and i can even draw over sections that i had before so you can see that that is quite natural the way we would expect to draw this is what we call automatic drawing tool because it automatically places down all these anchor points. When I highlight them like this, you can see all those little anchor points. They are created automatically with the pencil. And each anchor point, wherever there, cur there are curves, you will also get these little things called handles. When I drag this out, you can see that these two handles really control how that anchor point is going to uh, look like. Now, with the pen tool, you have to draw these anchor points manually. So it's not an automatic tool. You have to click, click, and that creates the anchor points. If you want to draw a curved line, you have to click and drag. And then the next line will automatically be curved as well. So you have to consider how this handle is working. If you don't want this to go uh, into another curved section like it would go in my case, I can just simply click on that last anchor point and then I can continue with a straight line again. So this is quite tricky, especially as I said, when it comes to drawing curves. But look at this. Instead of drawing curves, what you can do is draw straight lines, okay? You might say that that's very far from what we need here, okay? But I intentionally go to the points where this uh, little flame, it could be like a logo, it needs to turn. So I just go on these main uh, tips and turning points, and then comes the important shortcut. Hold down the Alt or Option key, and notice what happens when I do this. I just zoom a little bit closer so you can see it. When I hold down the Alt key and I hover over the path, that's when the cursor changes to this curvature uh, tool, with which I can click and start dragging it out. I probably have to zoom back, otherwise it doesn't do it properly. So holding down the Alt key, I can drag it out into a curve and fit it perfectly where it needs to go. And look at that, how easy that is. So instead of really struggling following that path, I just put down those simple points in the beginning and I almost get everything in place. I'll show you how to fix whatever it doesn't go into place but most of them will fall nicely into place just simply by using this simple old click and drag. And I think I'm better off using the tablet. The mouse is not behaving correctly here. If you have a point where your handles are not in place, you just hold down the command on Mac or control key. And with that, you can adjust the handles individually. So you can really align it again in place wherever it needs to go. Like here, I just align it like that and immediately we have a perfect shape. Now you can imagine even that big line, big curve I would be able to do with the same technique. But just to show you how effective this technique is, this is another quite difficult shape to draw. I will just draw one side of it. But look at this technique. I start here and hold down the shift key. That's the only one I haven't mentioned yet. Shift will draw a straight line. And then I hold down shift key again, click again there on the top. So we have three anchor points at the moment. Then I hold down the alt key. We can start here at the bottom, start dragging that. And that already looks quite good. But if you hold down shift as well, it makes sure that this curve is also forced to keep the handles horizontal. See, when I don't hold down the shift, it works like that. But Alt and Shift or Option Shift together, I could do that. And then the same thing here, I can hold down Alt and Shift together, see how it changes. So Alt and Shift together, that is it. And then continuing from that point, I just click at the bottom and again, Alt and Shift together. And there you go, we have half of it. So if I would do that with the pen tool without using shortcuts, I would have quite a 
trouble doing it as nicely as this and especially with such less amount of anchor points. Remember I had one, two, three. That's it. Three points having all this shape created. So learning to work with the pen tool and these few shortcuts will help you. Um, and there's obviously lots of other methods, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, I just would like to mention also another thing which came out uh, with Creative Cloud version of Illustrator, which I found very useful. When you select an object, you can switch to the direct selection tool. The shortcut is A. When you do that, you will get these little corner widgets. These little circles show up around each corner point. And with them, you can click and drag to change the corners. So from sharp corners, you can turn into completely rounded corners. But more importantly, you can select individual points as well. I normally do a selection like that. And then you can change just that one individual corner point. And if you double click on the corner widget, that's also useful because then you get additional options where you can actually dial in the value you wish to use. Plus you even have inverted roundness and chamfer as well, which cuts it off. And when you use round options, you even have a different rounding option called relative and absolute. And the cool thing about this is these are always going to be available. These are live changes. So whenever I come back to this object, even if I add colors on it, let's just say I use a color or I could do changes to the stroke, whatever I do, these will always be there for me to make changes to. And remember, if you have the whole object selected, you change all the points. But if you select multiple points, only the ones you wish to change, then only those will change. See, if I select half of it, then I can change only half, but the other side stays.